a land blessed with an array of solid mineral resources. Bear in mind, vibrant population, 200 million strong. We should be talking about one of the most productive countries of the world. In this video, we'll discuss Nigeria's solid mineral development, its challenges, its gains, and point a way for the future. This is Discos. My name is Azubike. There are three stages in mineral development, exploration, mining, and processing. Exploration is the process of carrying out geophysical and geochemical tests to determine that a particular mineral is available in commercial quantity, that mining a particular mineral in this location is feasible. Exploration started in Nigeria pre-independence. It was mostly led by colonial miners. These miners did the mapping themselves. They had the equipment. They had the technical skills. So they did a detailed map of Nigeria then with all the minerals and all the sites that they discovered. Mining is the process of extracting these minerals from the earth crust. It's actually physical. You have to excavate. You have to dig out. Sometimes you have to put explosives. So mining comes with a lot of environmental impact. Mining can cause erosion. Mining can cause deforestation. Bring about a change in the ecosystem within that area. So it's something that has to be done in an environmentally friendly manner. So mining in Nigeria started pre-independence most most of the mines then were owned by colonial miners nigeria had very little power in terms of overseeing what was going on in its mining sector these miners had the power to go into a land you could just be in your community and somebody tells you that they've discovered gold in your land colonial authorities had the power to allocate mining land to who they deem fit various mining sites were established in nigeria the government saw the need to bring about economic balance, to redistribute opportunities, to make Nigerians have a say in their mining sector. So in 1972, the government decided to indigenize the mining sector in Nigeria. The implication for the colonial miners was that they were then compelled by law to yield majority stake in their respective companies to Nigerian owners. Although it was a well-intentioned law, it did not sit well with the colonial miners. A lot of them took up litigation against the government. So there were a lot of issues. It then led to some of these miners losing interest in mining altogether in the country. So they left and some of their businesses closed. As a result, the staffs that they had, the Nigerian staffs that they had already, who, were, who had already acquired basic level mining skills, but then had lost their jobs, resorted to illegal mining. Poor implementation of a set of laws put in place from that time, coupled with the lack of cooperation from the foreign miners, led to a steady decline in the sector. It resulted in deterioration of the physical regime, infrastructure, quality of the geotechnical data that we had. It became difficult to attract foreign investors in the mining sector. Processing simply means refining those raw minerals to into finished products. From 1999, the Nigerian government have put in place different policy initiatives to help develop the mining sector. So they were looking at exploration and then mining for export. And mind you, exploration and mining cause the most severe environmental impact to the community, to the ecosystem. But when you compare the value that you get in the finished product, processing carries most of that value. That's the reason why even countries with no natural resources can import those products and refine them, turn them into finished product for their own use or for exports. So the bulk of the value resides in the processing. So some of the advantages that processing come with. Now, first one I'll say is job creation. It's true that you create jobs during mining. Why mining jobs are good? We don't have anything to lose if we add more jobs by processing. But it's not just the jobs. It's the economic impact it has on your country as well. Processing provide good economic boost to countries 
companies because when you process, make finished goods, you sell them at a better rate. So if you mine and then you process, you make more profit. You boost your local economy. You earn foreign exchange by selling finished goods through research and development. You are able to put in proper technical initiatives that will lead to technical innovation that will ultimately lead to industrialization of, it, of your country. Another advantage that processing has is it enhances your national security. So if you process a particular goods, if you make finished product and there is any international issue, you prioritize supply for your local market. There are certain challenges that we face. To go into processing, you require energy, affordable grid power. That's a challenge that we have to overcome. It's the same challenge that is posed to most other industries. You require good road network between your mine and your factory, between your factory and where you're evacuating your goods, your ports, you want to export, you need good road network. You need technical expertise. But then these challenges are not insurmountable. In terms of energy, Nigeria is making a lot of effort to stabilize its power. But even before we get to that level where our grid becomes strong enough to power all our industries, we can use specific area models. So say you can have an industrial area where you locate your processing plants, locate these industries within those particular areas, we can ensure that we provide stable power supply. In the area of technical expertise, we can engage in foreign technical partnership. We can have partnerships with companies abroad that are willing to send their staffs down to work with our own local staffs and train them. And with time, engage in skills exchange. It's just a matter of time. But we are getting there. So at this point, there's really nothing that stops us from going into process. So let's mention some success stories. Botswana invested a lot in his diamond industry. He decided to go into cutting and polishing of diamond, the processing of diamond, and its, its economy grew because of that. Chile developed its copper mining industry and decided to go into processing of copper, and it also boosted their economy. One that is also close to home for us is South Africa. Into both the explore, exploration, the mining, and the processing of gold, South Africa is emerging as a world leader in the development of the value chain of gold. But that list is not complete without mentioning Nigeria, of course. Nigeria, between 1999 and now, has recorded huge success. Nigeria has identified its most abundant minerals in limestone and focused on it, issued a few licenses for mining and processing. The likes of Dangote, Boa, Lafarge, and the rest of them partnered with the federal government and today like you know nigerians benefit from locally produced cement from some of these companies that i mentioned that has significantly added to the gdp of nigeria that has significantly reduced the pressure on foreign exchange for importation of cement in nigeria as a matter of fact nigeria is a net exporter of cement today nigeria exports cement to different african countries these companies dangote employs close to 20,000 staff just for his cement business alone bua employs about 1,200 and something staff Lafarge employs about 1,500 staff. Having gone into processing of limestone alone has provided more than 20,000 direct jobs for Nigeria. And we are just at the beginning stage. Imagine when more licenses are issued and more people are allowed to go into that sector and produce domestic cement. You get the picture of what I mean. So you have the mining business and you have the processing business all employing Nigerians. That's the power of local processing. So I'm happy that Nigeria took that initiative from then till now. And we are seeing the results and going into the future. That's what we want to see. But beyond limestone, what next? Produce two tables. Rank your mineral, rank our minerals. One table is what do we have mostly in abundance? in commercial quantity and then the second table says what do we consume the most in this country and what has viability for export if any particular mineral ranks high in these two tables 
Of course, that's the next minute our government should focus on. For me, I think a good example of this would be gold and lead. Gold has huge economic potentials, so we don't even need to talk too much about that. Lead also, why I mention lead is lead most of the time occurs side by side with gold. So uh, currently in Nigeria, you have a lot of artisanal miners that mine gold. Sometimes they accidentally run into lead. Now, because they use crude methods, they don't use modern mining methods and they don't actually have the modern technical skills to handle lead powder. In the process of they are mining, mining gold, they encounter lead powder and then the lead powder escapes into the community. There has been a case like that in Zamfara State where there was lead poisoning. Lead poisoning leads to learning disability and developmental problems in especially children. If we want to develop gold with all its huge potential, we will do it together side by side with lead, bringing robust regulations. Because if you allow artisans to continue to mine gold in Nigeria, not only are we losing out on the huge benefits that local processing of gold and lead can provide for this country, we are also running the risk of serious environmental damage. If there is a huge deposit of lead that these artisanal gold miners tamper with, it can lead to a lot of pollution of our environment. It can endanger our next generation. So we really have to be careful with that. We'll be able to mine gold and lead, lead using environmentally friendly methods using sustainable methods using modern techniques in nigeria the development of gold and lead carries enormous economic benefits south africa can attest to that we have local demand for these two products and they have export potential. If we process more of what we have locally to provide more of what we need locally, we'll become less dependent on imports and be well on our way to industrialization. So we are urging Nigerians who have the means, who have the financial capacity, who have the business ideas, partner with government. Look at the examples that Dangote, that Boa, that Lafarge, and those companies have set in limestone focus on gold, focus on lead. While government is doing its best to provide good regulation and the enabling environment, Nigerian investors should lead the charge. Industrial scale development of gold and lead is the next frontier of solid mineral development in Nigeria. This is the way to go. This is the next step to industrialization. This is Discourse and my name is Azubike. Thank you for watching this video.